So thank you very much. My name is James Sudi Nabangi. I work with the Institute of Directors. Uh, but today I'm wearing a different hat. But I still maintain my hat. So I wear a different hat, but I maintain my hat. My hat today is an MC for this particular event. While I was asked to be the MC today, I spent sleepless, a sleepless night. So the whole night I've been trying to figure out how I'm going to do this. And I remembered an incident I had. This is, a, this is factual, that uh, the days of the internet are here, but a few years ago, they were never here. The days of the TV were there, a few years ago, they were never here. The days of the radio, when all families used to gather around to get to listen to news, all right, we're gathering here to listen to some good news. But then there was a day when there was fire, where we used to gather around fire and make news. We never used to have to listen, we used to make news. So those are the days we need to relish, I think, all of us. Now, when it comes to governance, is when we all meet together to actually just talk about good governance, and that's why we're here today. The Institute started in 2004. Institute of Directors started in 2004 um, and it has been a journey for us to be here today. A journey I think mostly of a lot of sacrifice, a lot of patience and not giving up. Every single day trying to do something new. Uh, we champion good corporate governance across the board. We are a business membership organization for both the aspiring and practicing directors in this particular country in the public and private sector. I remember once when I was in Masai Mara and I was, I was confronted by a rhino and with rhinos normally they are, they are actually uh, partially blind so they don't see you, they smell you. So the trick with rhinos is you don't run, you, you just let it wander where you are. So, but I took off and by taking off I did, that was a wrong mistake. Those things listen, listen to your footsteps and actually charge you across the desert or across the, the, the forest. Uh, at some point I thought to myself, let me stop. So I stopped and as, as, as the rhino charged, it still came, but I decided, you know what, boldly, just stop. 30 meters, it, it actually also halted because it now started wondering where are the footsteps. It couldn't get that, so it walked back. But then a few moments ago, it also smelled my presence somewhere. Then they started charging back again. I just stood there and waited for it. It came about 10 meters. My friends were yelling and asking me not to uh, stop. I should keep on running or actually uh, try and confuse the rhino. But I thought that was not the best thing to do. So the rhino came again and stopped. And then a few minutes turned back and went. Why am I saying this? I mean, I experienced, I learned a lot from that particular experience that we don't run away from our problems, right? I mean, governance requires us to be bold. Yeah, so I'm trying to relate that to the governance, but it was quite an interesting episode that I experienced with the rhinos. Uh, so you should also try it once when you get to the, no, I'm not encouraging you to do that. <laughs> Allow me at this juncture to welcome my able CEO, Meshek Joram, to guide us in the next stage of this particular program, to give us a welcome remark, so that now we can actually start off this particular event. Good morning. The chairman of the IOD, the board members present, fellows of the IOD, members of the institute, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It gives me great pleasure to welcome all of us to our second Fellowship Awards event. And it is good for us to remind ourselves that we inaugurated these prestigious awards in 2018. And this year we have more members of the Institute who will be joining this distinguished group of fellows. It is worth to note that our fellows have continued to distinguish themselves through their outstanding service and contribution to the cause of good governance. Today, as we recognize and award these fellows, we have, who have deservedly earned this recognition, we continue to exemplify the need for us as a country to recognize distinguished service 
humility, hard work, selflessness, and servant leadership. As you will note from their outstanding CVs and profiles, the fellows who are being awarded today have played a significant role at the IOD and to the course of corporate governance in Kenya. Ladies and gentlemen, I like to mention that as an institute, we are very proud that for the second, second year running, we are having this event. And what we'd like to encourage all our members and to mention at this point in time is that we have a five to 10 year plan in terms of how we want these awards to evolve. And we encourage our members to be part of this journey with us. And we will be uh, making use of the fellows even as we plan for the uh, years ahead in terms of how we want these uh, awards to evolve. As I mentioned, this uh, prestigious event will seek to recognize outstanding work towards the institute and the corporate governance space. And the process that we go through in identifying the recipients of this award is a very diligent process that I'll be running us through shortly. And we select uh, the recipients of these awards, both from the public, private, and academic sectors. And these are people who are considered as thought leaders, as well as champions of corporate governance. In going through the process of identifying the people to uh, be recognized as fellows, the board takes into consideration and the justification for the nomination should be subjected uh, through a vetting process by the nominations committee of the board. And these considerations include, number one, facilitation of IOD CPD events to qualify for fellowship through facilitation of IOD KCPD events a member should have facilitated IOD events as a speaker or a discussant in a panel at least twice in a year for a period of not less than four years with an, ag with an aggregate evaluation score of excellence by the events delegates. The other criteria that we use is by service to the board. By service to the institute through the board position, a member who has served in the board for two consecutive terms shall qualify for award of fellowship after expiry of his or her term, subject to demonst demonstrable attendance of at least 70% of board and board committee meetings, which he or she ought to have officially attended during the term. By service in a committee of the board, a member who has served in the board committee for three terms may qualify for award of fellowship upon him or her providing demonstrable service to the institute and subject to a record of attendance of 70% of committee meetings that he or she ought to have attended within the period. The other criteria that we use is, of course, uh, where one is elected as chair of the board. An elected chairman of the board may qualify for fellowship of the institute upon him or her providing demonstrable service to the institute after serving as the chairman. At this point in time, maybe it's just good for me to mention that we only have um, one chairman so far who has qualified as a fellow of the institute. And again, this is an indicator of the rigorous process that the nominations committee and the membership committee are subjects all um, the awardees to before they are actually awarded. And it's, it's an honor to have Mr. John Luther with us here today, who is uh, one of the chairs who, was, who is a fellow of the Institute of Directors Kenya. Uh, by branch or chapter leadership, a member who has served as a chapter or branch leader and subsequently serves in the committee of the board for at least one term will qualify for fellowship subject to a record attendance of 70% of the branch or chapter of committee meetings and has exhibited demonstrable performance in serving the institute. In addition to this, subsection 23 of the memorandum and articles provide that notwithstanding anything elsewhere herein contained, the members may, on the recommendation of the board, elect at general meetings or at special meetings of the board or of the nominations committee persons to be identified or to be awarded as honorary fellow members being persons who have rendered outstanding service to the institute and or to the public. What this simply means is even outside what we do outside of the institute of directors, we are very keen to identify members of the public 
who make significant contribution to the course of corporate governance. And that uh, contribution to corporate governance then, of course, impacts on the recognizing uh, three fellows who have been subjected to uh, this criteria. And uh, we will get to know them shortly. So thank you very much. At this point in time, I'd like to invite my chairman to give his remarks. And from there, uh, I will come back to the podium and lead you to the next uh, phase of the program. Thank you very much, chairman. Welcome. Good morning, everyone. All protocol observed to our distinguished guests. It is with great joy and our sincere most gratitude to have you here with us today. I cannot uh, emphasize that anymore. Recently, I was at a certain function and uh, somebody on the screen displayed uh, two images. One about Kenya in 1963, and just next to that slide was also a picture of Singapore in 1963. And then fast forward, Singapore, I think in 2019, and Kenya similarly at 2019. And the question was that, what did we just not do? Uh, and I was asked that question. And I just said, we just didn't do one thing which Singapore just uh, did very well. We just didn't apply corporate governance and, and ethics, period. Uh, and I do believe that if Africa gets that right, the rest of the things will fall in place. That's all we need to address. So in short, I think seated here today, all of you with us in IOD, uh, I do believe we are doing the most important job for for Africa as, as a continent. Today, as the CEO has rightfully said, we are here to honor those who have done pure justice to corporate governance within Kenya. They have played their diligent roles in this long journey to promote uh, ethical corporate governance. Hence, it is not a journey for the faint-hearted. It is a journey for those with grit and conviction. And those are the ladies and gentlemen that we are awarding here today. Uh, I term them the few with the lion hearts, and uh, probably some of our members who are already uh, fellows, uh, they certainly know where they belong. Uh, I think you are all lion-hearted. These are men and women, as I've said, of impeccable character, of integrity, and as the CEO has explained, have satisfi satisfied our rigorous and very stringent criteria. We've formed a special chapter, which we call the Board of Fellows. So once these few uh, ladies and gentlemen have been uh, recognized as exemplary uh, role models as, as regards ethics and corporate governance. Then they join a board of fellows. And uh, I'm glad to report here that our main board has just uh, ratified our, our terms of reference for this board of fellows. So in short, what they'll be doing with us is that uh, they'll report directly to the main board of IOD. And uh, from a day to day, we'll give them special tasks to perform for the institute. So they'll not just be sitting there and uh, sitting very comfortably on their awards. They'll be working. They will expect them to work. I always like to remind uh, members like you is that uh, the importance of corporate governance and, th and ethics cannot be stressed more than it is today. So as you sit here with us today, keep reminding yourself that we have a lot of work to do, a whole lot of uh, work to do into the future. But that should not discourage us. It's work to be done. It's a bright day. Keep smiling and let's celebrate with the awardees today. Thank you very much and have a good day. And may God bless the Institute of Directors, Kenya. So I'd like to invite Mr. Karugo Gatama to come and uh, give some remarks and then we will move uh, straight to the award process. Karibu, Mr. Gatama. Oh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Anybody who accepts to be a fellow consequently also agrees that because of that recognition, they will join the Board of Fellows and offer support and when called upon advice to the Board of the Institute on any matters relevant to the strategic and ethical leadership of the Institute and the practice of directorship. They must do so in order to advance the goals and mission of the Institute. In particular, ensure that corporate governance purpose is attained. In this country, a lot of us have been trained in corporate governance. But as the chairman said, 
how effective is the practice? How are we becoming the creators of wealth and sustainable wealth? Why is it that we as a continent continue to call upon China, to buy clothes from China? So are we driving competitive performance and sustainable excellence? Are we ensuring the effective stewardship of the mandate and mission of the institute? Do we ensure that the work of the institute promotes national development and national competitive excellence? So this is why when you become a fellow, you say you are not just being honored. You are being perhaps put on a pedestal to show that you can help achieve competitive excellence. Obviously, you also, they said you report to the board, but you're also supposed to enable the board to effectively engage in reflective self-evaluation processes and corrective actions that ensure the improvement in the performance and impact of the institute. Finally, as a fellow, you'll be called upon by the board and the membership to act as a voice of the institute on issues that affect the better governance of business and the practice of directorship in the country and in Africa. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me at this particular juncture to welcome Ms. Susan Kawira, who is going to actually introduce our first fellow member to the stage, so at least we can actually have this particular process going. Good morning. So I'm here to present uh, Madron's uh, profile. So Miss Madron Olucha, Olunya, sorry, Oluoch, is the managing partner of Azali CPS LLP, a premium provider uh, of board, secretarial, and corporate governance advisory services. She is a multi-skilled professional with extensive management and consulting experience gained over 20 years in board, legal, and human resource practice. She has worked in both the public and private sectors and across finance, hospitality, and fast-moving consumer goods industries within Africa. Madren is a founder board member of the Institute of Directors Kenya, where she has been a member since inception in 2004. She has worked with various organizations to implement international best practices related to corporate governance and build capacity for the sustainability of these interventions. In particular, she has facilitated various training workshops, conducted board evaluations and gov governance assessments, developed corporate governance here to award Mrs. Madren is uh, Mr. John our Lusa. former chairman, uh, Mr. Lusa. Karibu. Yeah, thank you, all protocol observers. Good morning. I once applied for a job at uh, uh, a maize milling company. And uh, when I went for interview, they took me around. I think they wanted my services. They took me around, and when I arrived at the interview room, they told me I didn't qualify. But I walked out looking like I look. So they owe me an apology. Because I don't work for them, yet I look like I work for them, from the top. It is nice that um, we have a long, come a long way over the 14 years of uh, existence of uh, this institute. And we, who are members of the Board of Fellows, are pleased to see that uh, today we are privileged to witness this evolving situation where the Board of Fellows and the Board of the Institute are continually working together to improve governance in our country. I'm pleased that uh, even younger people like uh, Madren uh, Oluocho Lunya uh, are qualifying to join the Waze, Mze Olunya. Please come, uh, come, come forward. As we award uh, this certificate of, uh, 
honoring um, your wife and you, Madren, as a fellow of the Institute of Directors, uh, it is good to note that uh, even as you rub shoulders with us and work with the board and work with the fellows, with the board of fellows, you, there is no risk of your husband ever getting infected. <laughs> Nothing to land on. <laughs> so it's my uh, pleasure and the privilege to, uh, to award you this certificate, Madren. And as I do so, I wish you well. Good morning, everyone. Um, I just want to say thank you. I haven't prepared a speech, so please just allow me to speak uh, freely. Um, I want to thank uh, the Institute of Directors uh, for giving me this honor. Uh, when I received the call, uh, I, I was pleasantly surprised. Um, but um, reflecting upon it, I could see, you know, uh, it's been a journey. I think for me, it's been a journey since Mr. Gatama invited me to attend the very first uh, corporate governance <laughs> workshop in 2001, I believe in Kenya, and uh, when I reflect over the years, I think I've had a very good uh, support system, and I do want to acknowledge and to thank them, uh, starting, of course, with my husband uh, and my family, who have been very supportive as far as my career is concerned, um, and I of course, I cannot forget God, who has been gracious enough to bring us here today. I want to acknowledge the board of directors, uh, the current board, together with the management team led by Meshak, uh, and the membership as well. Um, my passion is corporate governance. I've, you know, I've gone through various uh, professional uh, career uh, changes uh, from legal to human resources back to corporate governance. And my passion is really to be able to make a change, particularly with the SME sector. Those are my clients. Those are the people I work with to implement and help them just improve their governance practices. It always starts from the beginning, you know, just that simple step. So just want to say thank you once again, Asante. I will ask Nelly to come forward and read a bit about John Chariot. I believe you know a lot more, but just read a bit. Thank you very much. Morning, everyone. Born in 1953, John Kiplanga Chariot has spent 45 years teaching, training, facilitating, restructuring, and strengthening capacities of public and private organizations, as well as providing business development services in African countries, including Lesotho, Mozambique, Ethiopia, Tanzania, Uganda, Zambia, Zimbabwe, and South Sudan. For 12 years, John has worked across African countries as health system strength strengthening consultant. Um, the assignments have included develop developing strategies, strategic plans developing governance structures for national and county governments, building capacities of health leaders through training and coaching, um, carrying out program evaluations. John has supported the decentralization of health services for Ministry of Health in Lesotho and Kenya. John was engaged by international NGOs and developed Development partners including Management Sciences for Health, IntraHealth International, and USAID, among others. John provided organizational development services to five of eight water service and large water providers in Tanzania. John trained executives of nine municipal water companies as part of urban sectors reforms, which was supported by World Bank. In Malawi, John facilitated the development of sanitation strategies for Central Water Board. He has in the past years worked as a school teacher and a TSC for 13 years. He was a lecturer as, at Strathmore University from 2001 to 2009, an economist at Treasury for a year. Kiplangat served as a procurement officer at the Kenya Railways Corporation. He is a member of the Institute of Directors of Kenya and also a member of the Association of Financial, Financial Analysts of East Africa. Um, on behalf of Mr. John Chariot, Lucy. All right. Thank you very much. I think in about seven years' time, we are going to be awarding Nelly also. Uh, 
very soon and I'll be reading that profile. Thank you very much, Nelly. So, Ms. Mujuga, Lucy, come in and I will also want to welcome. <laughs> I said congratulations and welcome to the Board of Fellows. Thank you. Now, since I'm not uh, John Sheriot, I'm not going to present an acceptance speech, but one thing I can mention about John is that uh, John is somebody who will say, who is not afraid to say when he doesn't believe in something. He'll say it as it is. So for that, I think this is a well-deserved uh, certificate, and I believe he's going to, to represent the, the board and also join the, the team in the Board of Fellows to be the champion of the IOD. Thank you very much. So this is the profile of Dr. Nelson C. Courier, OGW MBS. Dr. Nelson Courier has a BA in Economics, an MA in Leadership Studies, Executive Leadership Training in Stanford University and the SAMI. His employment career spans 36 years, from 1979 to 2015, in development finance and insurance. He started his career in August 1979 in the Industrial and Commercial Development Corporation, ICDC, and entered the insurance industry in September 1982 through Kenya National Assurance Company as an assistant manager in charge of research and rose through the position of chief manager, general insurance division in 1992. The crowning of his career in insurance was in the Cooperative Insurance Company of Kenya, now CIC Insurance Group, which he joined in 1998 as chief manager in charge of strategy and business development, became managing director in 2001, and group CEO in 2011. He led the transformation of CIC from a very small cooperative insurer to the third largest insurer out of 48 insurance companies in Kenya, with three local subsidiaries, and an associate company, and the leading cooperative insurer in Africa with another three regional subsidiaries in South Sudan, Uganda, and Malawi by the time of his retirement in February 2015. Nelson has been honored with two awards by the President of Kenya for his contribution in cooperative and insurance development, Order of the Grand Warrior OGW in 2005, and Moran of the Burning Spear MBS in 2011. In the insurance industry, he was honored with a Lifetime Achievement Award in 2012 for his role in the development of insurance in Kenya. In March 2017, he was awarded an honorary doctorate in leadership by the Swiss Management, Accompany, uh, uh, Management Academy. He is past chairman of the Association of Kenya Insurance, Aki, and the vice chairman of the following organizations. Federation of Kenyan Employers, the Association of Microfinance Institutions of Kenya, and the Cooperative University College of Kenya. He has served as a board member of many local and international organizations, including Kenya Re, College of Insurance, Takaful Insurance of Africa, International Cooperative and Mutual Insurance Federation, UK, and he was also the first chair of the African Insurance Organization Microinsurance Working Group. He has served in the global task forces, notably the UN expert group meetings on glo global cooperative development, International Cooperative Alliance, and the African Insurance Organization, AIO. In addition to this, he has facilitated in a number of corporate governance training programs, notably for the Center for Corporate Governance, four directors, and chairman, and the SACO director's governance training that is organized by the SACO's Society's Regulatory Authority, SASRA. Currently, he is a member of the implementation committee of the Presidential Task Force on Parastatal Reforms. He is chairman of SMEP Microfinance Bank, Annual Financial Services, and Ethics Commission for Cooperative Societies. He is a board member of Kenyatta National Hospital, African International University, Habitat for Humanity, and Christ is the Answer Ministries Sitam. He is also a member 
of the Executive Audit Committee of Nyandarua County. Nelson is a regular speaker in both local and international conferences and seminars in insurance, cooperatives, leadership, governance, and retirement planning. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Nelson Kuria is a born-again Christian, and he enjoys being a lay preacher, whereby he is invited to preach in different churches. When I grow up, <laughs> I would like to have such an impeccable profile. So allow me to invite Alan Kimani and welcome Dr. Nelson Kuria to receive his award. Uh, but it's not about me today, it's about uh, him. And we are so delighted and honored to have you on the Board of Fellowship uh, with us, continue to mentor us, continue to guide us in, in governance. And we're absolutely delighted. And uh, congratulations and God bless. Yeah, thank you. Chair of the Board of IOD and the board members, the fellows, members of IOD, the staff of IOD, invited guests, and my fellow awardees. This is a great moment for me, and I can only give glory to God. Some people say they have come from far. But I always say, I have come from very far. And it is through hard work and the grace of God, coming from a very humble background with illiterate parents, an environment of abject poverty, that going to school was actually miraculous. And therefore, this is something that is very significant to me because it shows that you can rise from the bottom and get to the top. Out of industry, be committed to the values of honesty and integrity. And above all, acknowledging the sovereignty of God himself. I have been a disciple of Mr. Karugo Gatama. I was actually in the pioneer training programs of CCG. And I walked down that long journey of implementing governance structures in CIC, which was a very small cooperative captive insurer. And for those that know the situation of cooperatives, having board members who are just elected, they are a reflection of our society in the political realm. That you don't have those that are elected being the best. And dealing with the short termism makes it extremely difficult to implement uh, good corporate governance in such institutions. But I say, by the grace of God and tenacity, we were able to transform CIC through governance. So I talk from a point of experience and empirical evidence that good corporate governance works. And I think it is time that we move from the, to the next level where we see corporate governance from the perspective of compliance and move to its intrinsic value in terms of creating excellent organizations, good performers that create wealth and sustainable economies. So we have an arduous task as board members and members of IOD. And now that I'm a fellow, 
I was never told that there is no free lunch here. We have had a breakfast and I know we are going to pay for it. But nevertheless, we welcome that challenge because for most of us, this is the climax of consolidating our legacies in terms of implementing good corporate governance in our organizations and even in our nation. I must say that it was a very humbling experience for me to serve in the parastatal reform task force that did the first report and what needed to be done in terms of transforming governance of state corporations in this country. And then I was retained in the implementation committee of the same. And seeing the opportunities that are there to improve performance. But regrettably, as a nation, we have continued to squander opportunities of making this country great. The chairman gave the example of Singapore. And it is well known that Singaporeans came here and took part of our session on number 10, went and implemented a very successful mixed economy where parastatals even perform better than private companies. And they have really been creators of wealth. And I asked myself that in Kenya we could only afford to have a vision 2030 that aspired to make us a middle income country. And I asked myself, what happened to us that we can only aspire for the second level, not the first level? Yet other people took what we had developed and went to the first, to be the first world. So I'm very happy to have worked with IOD and look forward to continue working with IOD. May the Lord bless you. And may IOD become a beacon of hope in terms of revitalizing and raising the awareness of the intrinsic value of corporate governance in our organizations. Thank you all. Well, a famous poet, writer, and author says, I don't want to go viral. All I want is to set hearts on fire. Do you feel the fire in our hearts? We're feeling it, right? Amazing. So now that you mentioned uh, you have seen your age mates, I'm getting worried when I'm going to get there. But I believe with hard work and resilience, maybe in the next two years I can take a shortcut. Right? Very good. All right. Thank you. So now we want to do what we call a photo op. At this point in time, I would love to welcome the fellows for a photo op. Recognition to the board, to the fellows, and all members, good morning. Um, I'll take you very quickly through um, STL and um, eBoard. Just to introduce myself, my name is Anthony Combo of Software Technologies. Very briefly, I'll tell you about um, STL. So we are STL. We are a company that was formed back in, oh, sorry, we focus in three key areas, people, processes, and governance. And we're an organization that was founded back in 1991. Um, we focus in key areas of licensing, support, softwares, and uh, SaaS. Um, what is eBoard? eBoard is a board management system that helps you automate the board. Everything that you've had, for example, talking about compliance, talking about evaluation, talking about enforcing good governance, is exactly what eBoard does. So eBoard is a board management solution that helps you manage your board meetings, your board committee meetings, and all your senior management meetings. It helps you um, automate your board committee packs. It has dynamic minutes. It has a compliance monitoring tool, which I think you, you, you spoke about. Um, there's a secure chat and discussions forum. There's a repository of all your board documents, basically meaning you can have all the board documents from inception to date and going forward. You also have an offline briefcase in the event there's no internet. Um, for the video conferencing, you can see how we'd be able to capture it. And this would be very good, especially for quorum. We know normally quorum is an issue at, at, at board meetings. And um, we've also introduced plans 
plans is, is very key for, for governance. Uh, the board likes to know we've made some plans. How are we getting there? You talked about Vision 2030. There's certain things that you need to know and be able to capture, all right? Um, so how does it work? So very quickly, you can access it with any internet-enabled device, be it a desktop, a laptop, an iPad or a tablet, or even your phone. Then um, in terms of implementation, this is not a project. It takes about three days, maximum 10 days. So if you go and leave, you'll come back and find that everyone is talking about e -board. It's not those things that we, 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 we talk about for the, for the next 10 years, right? In terms of security, it's, it's extremely secure. That's why we've got clients such as the CMA, Safaricom, uh, the Nairobi Stock Securities Exchange. We've got a very good portfolio of companies. Um, just for you to know, we're also ISO certified. I think we're one of the only Kenyan companies uh, in ICT that are ISO certified. So you'll know how serious we're taking this. Uh, who else trusts eBoard? Just very quickly. Normally, um, I don't know Kenyans. Is it a Kenyan thing? You like knowing who else is using it? Huh? I don't know. I don't know. Even if you see something so nice, the always question is, who else is coming or who else is using it? So just to capture a few, there's the CMA, the IRA, the RBA, Kenya Power, Kenjan, Kenya Re, CIC, uh, the ERC, the CUE, Kenha. Um, we also have Safaricom, Iwura. By the way, we are in East Africa. We're not only in Kenya. We've actually spread our wings quite well. Zura, we are Parliament of Kenya, Umeme in Uganda, Sanlam. Basically, that's about eBoard. As I said, it's just a teaser for you to understand. I'm sure you'd have a lot of questions, and you'd like some time where you can ask, critique, um, especially when it comes to technology. Most people think that, will I be able to use that? You know? But I can tell you right now, um, once you interact with it, you will love it. All right? So thank you very much. Chairman, boards. Can I say fellow members, yeah, fellows, um, members of the IOD and all invited guests. It's really my pleasure today to stand before you. Panakuria, that was a heartwarming uh, message from you. I think uh, the few people that have uh, gone down this very far road uh, actually understand what you've uh, gone through. So thank you very much. Um, uh, software technologies, uh, that in itself was an enlightening uh, um, demonstration. I think those who did not know it or those who are not using it, I'm sure will contact you very soon, Anthony. Yeah. Um, thanks to the, uh, our fellows who took their time, and I can say very valuable time to attend and be with the rest of our members here and share those few moments with us as well. So thank you, fellow members. Um, thank you, board, chair, members of the board, uh, Alan, Celestine, Lucy, and big thank you to Meshak. Well, from myself as well, thank you all for being here, spending time, and I look forward very much to the next function and seeing you enticing many more members to join us. So thank you very much. Have a very good day ahead. My journey started in 2001. Uh, when I uh, attended one of the very first uh, corporate governance trainings in Kenya um, and from there my mind was opened up. At that time we thought it was, you know, people would talk about corporate governance and say, oh, it's just a passing fad, it's something that will come and go. But for me, I could see what the potential was in terms of uh, making a difference in terms of company performance, but also com uh, company performance for the longer term. Uh, and so I was privileged enough to be in a position where I was able to implement some of the lessons that I had learned uh, from that workshop and be able to apply it within my board processes, uh, working together with my board members. So that's where it all started. And then eventually, uh, I also started training uh, fellow board members and also working with company secretaries just to help us understand the concept of corporate governance and how to make it practical up until today where I can comfortably say that I have the privilege of having experienced corporate governance in different ways so I have served as an in-house company secretary I am a consultant uh, I have trained I have served as a board member and using all those different perspectives, I therefore am able to add value uh, to the people that I engage with and to uh, corporates that I work with to be able to make a difference in terms of their corporate governance. Uh, I've been privileged enough to have the support of the Institute of Directors uh, who have held my hand 
and have actually helped me just to be able to grow my knowledge and to grow my network. Being a fellow is a very serious responsibility. Um, it is an honor uh, and I accept it with all humility. The recognition from the institute as well as from my peers, I do not take it for granted. But in addition, it also means then that I have a higher responsibility, a bigger responsibility to continue spreading the gospel, continue helping others and helping myself be a beacon of hope as far as governance is concerned within corporate institutions. So I have a role to play to ensure that we embed this gospel of governance. For those who have not yet joined the Institute of Directors, I think you're missing out. You really need to be a member, you need to participate uh, and just you know, deal, deal with the issues as they are because there are challenges as we serve on boards, there are challenges uh, out there but when you work with uh, the Institute of Directors and you network amongst your fellow peers then you are able to get a support system that can help you navigate some of those challenges. In addition you also grow your knowledge uh, in terms of how to be a professional director and, and just get that support that is required as you walk along that journey. Well, it has been a long journey, uh, but one that uh, recognizes what the English people say, no pain, no gain. And in areas of implementing good corporate governance, there are lots of pains that are involved in it. It is not something that happens by edict because it comes to disrupt the status quo in terms of the way boards are run, in terms of the way organizations are run, creating a sense of accountability and transparency in environments where opaqueness and lack of accountability are the order of the day. When you want to introduce best practice in corporate governance that, uh, uh, you know, uh, deals, uh, disturbs this uh, uh, status quo, uh, you definitely have to face uh, serious problems. Nevertheless, it is worth the while, in fact, worth every while to implement best practice in corporate governance. I have seen it work in terms of transforming an organization that was a very small organization to become one of the largest corporates, not only in Kenya, but uh, in the African region. I have seen it happening in many other institutions where I have worked even in uh, our church, and I have seen it actually uh, separating an organization from the rest in terms of excellence. So. Corporate governance is not just for compliance purposes. It is not something that is just there for regulators. And the moment you comply with it, you say you are home and dry. <laughs> Corporate gov governance has intrinsic value in terms of improving performance organizations, performance of even a nation, when uh, we embrace the principles of good governance because you can't be an organization with good governance and fail to be a good steward and you know stewardship is the very essence of organizations that perform well nations that perform well when you realize that uh, when you are in a position of leadership you hold that position of leadership in trust of the public or the organization that has appointed you. It is not by your own right and for your own benefit. And the moment you realize that, that you are a steward, and what you do, you do it in trust, you become more sensitive in terms of being accountable to the stakeholders, being accountable even to God himself. Because the issue of stewardship starts from the Bible itself, from the, the parable of talents. We, we see how the issue of productivity, the issue of being accountable and, uh, you know, creating wealth, you know, making a difference is, is even in the Bible. So whatever we do, even in the corporate world, let us never teach our, cheat ourselves that God is not interested in that. I tell you, God is also interested in what we do, even in the corporate sector, because those are areas, our mission field, where we exercise our talents, and we shall give an account of those talents that God gave us. For me, I realize that I'm a steward, and I'll be fully accountable for that. That is why wherever I go to an organization, I 
exercise my best in terms of working in the best interest of the organization and the other people. My own welfare comes second. Because when the organization performs well, it is also able to remunerate you well. You don't have to steal. You just need to perform well and the organization rewards you well and you'll be able to live a good life without stealing. And I think even the issue of corruption, we are going to deal with it from that basis of understanding the very essence of stewardship. For me, it is something that uh, I'm truly humbled to have been awarded this. I least expected it because uh, I, I even did not know how they do it. But uh, when I received a letter, uh, you know, informing that uh, I had been uh, nominated and to confirm whether I accept, I was pleasantly surprised. But I was also happy. And I see it, everything that happens has a reason. And uh, that is why we need to do good. Even if this has come when I have already retired, it is because people recognize what I have done. And I say that with the humility, that it is good to, as part of my legacy. So I see that uh, this as a culmination of what I have done as a steward. This kind of recognition is not only for me, but for all those people who believe in good governance, who believe in the principles of stewardship, and above all, who know that these things happen also for the glory of God. So for me, I am happy because uh, this is what uh, you know goes out now to speak empirically, that yes, good governance pays, not only when you are already working, but even when you retire, people can still recognize what you did, and I'm happy that it has do not been done posthumously. It has been done when I'm still alive. So I want to commend IOD for even coming up with such kind of award, because it motivates people. It, it makes uh, even the body of fellows to become good role models. You know, to be able to impact the upcoming leaders, there is something they can aspire to. There are people who can inspire them in terms of doing good. So I'm so happy to have been honored this morning, and I thank God and IOD for that great honor. Uh, for those directors and organizations that are outside IOD, I want to tell them that they are missing a lot because this is where uh, things happen. This is an organization that is professional. It brings together, you know, uh, most of the people who have had uh, sterling careers in uh, as board members, as leaders, corporate leaders, and it is where you are able to create uh, very effective networks. Even when you want to recruit uh, good board members, this is the place to be. And that is why, for instance, for me as an example, for the organizations that I have worked with, already uh, one of them, CIC, is, is a member. SMEP Microfinance Board is a, a finance uh, bank is a member and we are already utilizing the services of IOD. And when you become a member, you even get a lot of free services. Like now the recruitment of directors when you are doing such, you go to the, you know, the data bank of IOD, you get all the kinds of directors that you want. You just give a profile and there you are. Within a few days you have gotten the kind of people you are looking for. And also the kind of people you meet even uh, in the forums organized by IOD. I mean, you, you, you exchange with the very best in this country that we are talking about, uh, you know, governance. So I'm so inspired by being a member and uh, being part and parcel of IOD, and I'm proud to be there. And I would welcome, I ask everybody, challenge everybody else actually, at organizational level to join IOD and even at individual level.